Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. I'm Sally Burdett, live from Johannesburg. Your top stories this evening. The Busasa House begins to fall. Former executives and the former Correctional Services CFO arrested for fraud and corruption. And it's quite clear that our teachers need more skills in dealing with uh, ill-disciplined learners. A violent incident caught on camera has sparked division and outrage at the Sans Souci Girls' School in Rondebosch. <laughs> what next for the ANC in the northwest as Supra Mahuma Pelo wins his bid to have the leadership in that province reinstated? We start here. Heads have started to roll over Bosasa. Today, three people were arrested, charged and released on bail. And there are more to come. Among those arrested today, Angela Gritzi, Andris van Tonder and Patrick Gillingham, a former CFO at Correctional Services. Tomorrow, former Correctional Services Commissioner Linda T is expected in court. Now, the Hawks have been building their case of corruption for years in this matter. And today, they swooped. Erin Bates has the details. So far, those arrested and charged in connection with allegations of Busasa corruption are Angelo Agrizzi and Andris van Tonder, both former Busasa bosses, and Patrick Gillingham, the former CFO of Correctional Services. Also in court and set to be charged on another indictment, Bosasa's Carlos Bonifacio and Franz Foster. The Hawks' take is better late than never. I think we should be all be happy that at least something is being done. And uh, it does not necessarily mean that this is the end of it. The accused's appearances were over in a flash. So, are you happy to have bail? No problem. The Hawks arrested the men on Wednesday morning. Why now? Well, it's based on investigations. I mean, we made, an, we made it public uh, last year, in December, yes, if, if not November, to say that the investigation has been completed. Of the eight years? But, of, well, there are cases that can take up to 15 years. It doesn't matter. There's no time frame in any investigation. Noticeably absent from court proceedings on Wednesday afternoon was former Correctional Services Commissioner Linda T. But the state prosecutor said during proceedings in Court 19 that the state hopes he will appear at the same venue on Thursday. The accused were ordered to hand over their passports and granted 20,000 rand bail. Whenever they need to use such travelling documents, they must uh, do it in writing, inform the, the investigating officer and then get permission. For now, they walk free. Their next appearance is on the 27th of March. Aaron Bates, Pretoria. A private security company is being summoned to Parliament after a Durban University of Technology student was shot dead yesterday. Mlungisi Madonsela was killed during a protest at DUT's Steve Biko campus. Students were demonstrating over problems with funding, accommodation and registration. Sipa Mandlagoge has the latest. Young and on the verge of finishing his studies. <laughs> 21-year-old Mlungi Sima Tonsela's life ended through the barrel of a gun, allegedly belonging to a security guard. Mlungi Sima Tonsela is a fighter whom we proudly associate ourselves with who died for a, a noble cause, a cause to achieve free decolonized education in our lifetime. Madonzela's family says it's too devastated to talk about his death. Many are blaming DUT for the incident. The university's management is investigating and says it's taking responsibility. Yes, the university is not denying that the responsibility to make sure that there is a security uh, at the university for staff and students is our responsibility. Matonzela's murder has brought back the debate about the presence of armed private security at institutions of higher learning. We condemn guns being used against uh, students uh, at our university. 
police are investigating a case of murder. Sipamandla Koke, Deben. To Centurion now, where a teacher at a primary school has been accused of sexually abusing pupils. The Valhalla Primary School hasn't suspended the teacher, who is now apparently reporting for duty at the district office. Parents are threatening to protest, as Slindelo Masikani reports. Parents at this primary school are fuming. This is after it was revealed in a parents' meeting that more than 20 pupils have come forward accusing a grade 6 teacher of sexual abuse. The children are said to be between 10 and 13 years old. It's alleged the 55-year-old male teacher inappropriately touched them at school last year. <laughs> On Wednesday, parents were up early to ensure the teacher wouldn't set foot in a classroom. Tempers flared when it was reported the school had known about the claims for at least two weeks now. Pupils had allegedly told teachers about the abuse following a workshop with the Metro Police Department, which taught them about the signs of sexual assault. It seems like they're trying to hide something. There's something fishy about the whole matter. So they are saying we must wait for the procedure, but with us as parents, I won't trust I mean, to bring my child in the school anymore. The Gauteng Education Department and police are now investigating. Law enforcement agencies must be given an opportunity to do their work. Uh, we must desist from probably coaching you know, our children on what to do, what, what to say. The Gauteng Education Department is assuring parents the teacher won't be returning to the school. In the meantime, pupils are being provided with trauma counselling. Slinda Lomasigan in Centurion. Well, a Cape Town parent has laid an assault charge against a teacher who slapped her daughter in class. A video showing the altercation at Cape Town's upmarket San Susi Girls High School has gone viral. Some people are arguing it was a racist incident, but many pupils at the school are rubbishing it. In fact, they've even made a banner saying this was not racism. The governing body and provincial education department is now probing the matter. Now, warning, this story contains visuals that are quite graphic and violent. Let's take a look at that video. It's quite clear that our teachers need more skills in dealing with uh, ill-disciplined learners so that they don't get to the point of committing corporal punishment or literally you know, hitting somebody like this. Um, there are different methods available to do that. And in my statement that I did issue today, there are, there are links to some suggestions as to what to do. And I think you know, when there are clearly um, problems in a particular school, we can try and bring programs into the school to try and ensure that learners and uh, teachers are given extra skills to try and solve their disputes and differences without getting to this point. That's all I can say. I was terribly shocked, disappointed. Um, yeah, I was shocked, I was disappointed, I was upset. And what did your child say following, you know, you speaking to her about that incident? Um, she was also very upset um, and very emotional, as one can be. But, yeah, we spoke to her, and fortunately she's got a good family and um, friend support structure, as you can see. So, yeah, that's basically it. So, um, yeah, I thank you guys very much, but as I said, the school is running the investigation. Uh, the law will take, it, take its course and, yeah.
A court victory today for former Northwest Premier Supra Mahoma Piro. The South Gauteng High Court found the ANC ignored its own rules when it disbanded the Northwest Provincial Executive Committee last year. Now, the court has ordered the committee be reinstated in two days, which would put the former provincial ANC chairperson back in charge of the party in the province. But Mahoma Pila's victory may be short-lived. The ANC says it's going to appeal. Mahoma Pila, meanwhile, says he's willing to meet with the ANC and find a way forward. There's no need to be excited because uh, it was unnecessary for us to be where we are today. The problem was uh, we tried to speak to our leadership, National Executive Committee, and uh, they didn't want to listen attentively to some of the things we wanted to communicate to the National Executive Committee. All right, let's take a look at other stories making headlines today. Trade Union Federation FEDUSA is defending itself amid the IO Technologies share controversy. Its General Secretary Dennis George has been put on special <coughs> leave following allegations he invested in the company himself and on the Federation's behalf. That's without informing FEDUSA. IO is one of the controversial companies the PIC invested government employees' pension funds with. Self-proclaimed prophet Shepard Bushiri and his wife were today granted bail of 100,000 rand each in the specialized commercial crimes court in Pretoria. They're accused of money laundering and fraud. Bushiri's followers once again filled the streets of Pretoria to support the controversial pastor. Nigerian pastor Timothy Omotosho's lawyer, Peter Doberman, looks to have won his attempt to have the presiding judge step down from the case. Now, according to Doberman, Judge Mandela Makaula agreed to recuse himself from the rape trial after a meeting they had. He's expected to do so formally on the 15th of March. Doberman accused Makaula of being biased and sympathetic towards first witness Cheryl Zondi. Pastor Timothy Omotosho and his co-accused are facing more than 90 sex-related charges. Let's so head on E! News. Sticking to his guns about that border wall with Mexico, U.S. President Donald Trump delivers his State of the Union address calling for a political compromise. The state of our southern... And on the business front, the RAND weekend in early trade today, and this as investors wait for signs of a recovery in South Africa's economy. Let's talk money and business now with Rufiwa Madzena, but we're actually talking about gross mismanagement at Transnet. More heads may roll. Tell us more. Absolutely, Sally. And before we get into the, mis the levels of mismanagement that are happening there, let's actually just listen to Dawu Marwe, who's the interim chief executive, about the plans that have been put in place. What we are doing is we are um, entering into negotiations with the OEMs, uh, you know, China South Rail, China North Rail, uh, basically uh, to look at how to renegotiate contracts for new uh, locomotives that are needed by the business. Um, starting, you know, mid-February, we'll be entering those uh, negotiations. Uh, then there are other investigations at another level in terms of uh, the amount of monies that were misspent um, we have written to some of the uh, entities ad identified uh, to uh, start the process of recovering the monies. So investigations there have been ongoing, reports and contracts have been gone through with a fine tooth comb to see where billions have been lost. And the contracts that he speaks about here is one with a, a Chinese a rail company, which it gave about 6.1 billion rand to for maintenance fees, and it paid about 618 million of that, which it's been able to get back from that Chinese firm because it was a contract that really was uh, done irregularly. It's also going 
to be getting back almost two billion in consultation fees from McKinsey and Regiments Capital. So those negotiations are still going. And I mean, these two consulting firms are at loggerheads with Transnet because they believe that everything was done above board. So even though all of this is going on, the interim chief executive and the uh, chief financial officer has indicated that Transnet, if it continues with the cleanup that it's been having, it will be able to sustain growth of about 3.5% annually. So it's not all bad news for Transnet. It's just a matter of watching whether or not it's going to continue in the path that it's taken in recent months. I think as the extent of the rot becomes clear, it's, it's mm -hmm. very, one is very dismayed. But on the other hand, to hear this sort of thing, there are clear signs that change is coming and, and let's hope it continues. No, absolutely, Sally. Absolutely. How, how are the markets today? Lots of change in the markets today. We saw the JSC closing higher today with gains coming from the financials and industrials, which were led by the likes of heavyweight NASPERS. On the commodities front, the gold price was slightly softer today, but the Brent crude oil price was up more than a percent to about $62 a barrel. On the currencies front, the rand is more than a percent softer from overnight levels and focus is now expected to shift to tomorrow's State of the Nation address as markets continue to scrutinise the government's finances. Thank you very much. Rafi, we will chat again to you tomorrow. Let's take a look at stories making international headlines now. And US President Donald Trump has once more vowed to build that wall at the southern border. During his State of the Union address, he called illegal immigration, quote, a threat to the safety, security and financial well-being of all Americans. Democrats say America is made stronger by the presence rather, of immigrants and not the presence of a wall. Trump has urged Democrats and Republicans to find a compromise by the 15th of February deadline. Pope Francis says he is committed to stopping the sexual abuse of nuns by priests and bishops. Speaking to media as he returned from his visit to the United Arab Emirates, the Pope said women were still being treated as second-class citizens. A senior Vatican official resigned earlier this year after a former nun accused him of, a, of soliciting sex from her while hearing her confession. Still ahead, we'll go to our weather centre and Joel is standing by with your live weather report. Hello, Joel. And then... His artwork has been selected to form part of a major Swiss watchmaker's 2019 annual collector series. We introduce you to Pig Casso, the painting pig. Let's go to Joel Guy in Cape Town. Evening, Joel. Quite a lot of rain about, I see. Oh, yes, indeed. We had some good thunderstorms over the northeastern parts of the country this uh, Wednesday, and it looks like things are going to stay more or less like that on uh, Thursday. But for tonight, we are going to be seeing rain and drizzle over parts of the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu Natal, pushing into eastern Pumalanga and Limpopo as we get into Thursday morning. And this cold front is going to be brushing along the east coast, maintaining wet weather over these parts of the country. Then in the afternoon, we are going to see isolated to scattered rain and thunderstorms for much of eastern South Africa spreading into the northern parts of the northwest as well as the northern Cape. Then over the western areas, we will stay with the mostly clear skies. And in these areas highlighted by this shade of red, it's going to be seasoning hot in most places. And so we have a high fire danger warning for much of the western and northern Cape provinces as well as the western sections of the Free State. Thunderstorms continue over the eastern areas in the evening and also push down into the northern parts of the northern Cape. Now, here's taking it closer to your part of the country. It's going to be sizzling hot for much of the Northern Cape with highs in the upper 30s and lower 40s in most areas. Isolated thunderstorms later on in the day for Arpinson. We are going to see clear skies with the very hot afternoon temperatures for much of the Western Cape. Also seeing temperatures here reaching the upper 30s and lower 40s. Cape Town will shoot to around 38 degrees on Thursday afternoon. We are expecting light rain along the Eastern Cape coastal areas, especially for the first part of the day to be mostly sunny and hot for the northern sections. Isolated rain and thundershows are forecast for much of the KwaZulu-Natal province where it's going to be warm in most parts. 
We are going to see rain and thunder showers as well for much of Mpumalanga, where highs in the lower to mid-20s are forecast for much of the province. Light rain is forecast for the eastern areas of Limpopo. Thunder showers will persist for the western areas, where highs in the lower 30s are forecast. We are also going to see thundery showers across much of the northwest. It stays hot here with uh, Mahikeng as well as Rustenburg and Zeros to peaking at around 30 degrees. We are also going to see thunder showers for the eastern areas of the free state spreading northwards into Hauteng, where highs in the lower 20s and 30s and upper 20s are expected. That's all from the Weather Centre for now. Back to you, Sally. Thank you very much, Joel. Absolute scorching Cape Town tomorrow for the State of the Nation address, 38 degrees. Finally this evening, from pork chop to painter, a pig from Franchuk is making headlines again. One of the world's most famous watch brands has asked the pig to create something special for the Chinese year of the pig. It's not hogwash. The Swiss watchmaker has recognized Pig Casso's talent online and selected her as the artist they want to design their annual collector series for 2019. Pig Casso was rescued from a local hog factory farming practice brought to Farm Sanctuary SA, a non-profit organization that inspires compassion for farm animals. Even though she's a celebrity now, Pig Casso still enjoys the simple things in life, like eating everything but spinach and taking luxurious long mud baths. Before we go, let's look at our top stories once more. The Bosasa House begins to fall. Former executives and the former Correctional Services CFO arrested for fraud and corruption, and there's more to come. A violent incident caught on camera has sparked division and outrage at the San Susi Girls' School in Stellenbosch. For me and the team, it's a very good night.